Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is set to hit theaters soon and will feature a lesser known but unique supervillain called The Spot. Now I'm sure Doom will seem imminent and Miles Morales will struggle to conquer his foe, but if the past and his comic book history are any indicators of what's to come, I'm quite positive that Miles and the plethora of other Spideys featured in this movie will figure out how to topple Spot like the rest. Speaking of villains Miles Morales has defeated, here are 50 15 of them, and we ranked them. Let's take a look. The first entry on our list is undoubtedly the most terrifying looking villain that we'll talk about in this video, but uh, also the baddie that Miles Morales was able to defeat the easiest. Appearing in only one comic book to date, Madame Swarm met her demise after feeling the effects of one singular signature Miles Morales Venom Blast. Yeah, yeah, the old one hitter quitter. These Venom Strikes or Venom Blasts will be a reoccurring thing that happens throughout this video, so just keep that in mind as we move along. Little is known about Madame Swarm, other than the fact that either her first or last name is Sturm, and she was a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who was transformed into a swarm of robotic bees after an experiment gone wrong. You know, typical villain origin stuff right there. In Spider-Verse Volume 3, Issue 5, Madame Swarm attacks New York City with a, well, a, well, a swarm of aforementioned robotic bees, all before being toppled by Miles and Spider-Man Noir. There's not much more I can say here, as we haven't seen or heard from Madame Swarm since, but it's Marvel. So I'm sure that she'll be buzzing around, huh, sometime again in the future? Brock Rumlow is a former street gang leader turned a student of Taskmaster who we will talk about later on in this video. Crossbones is also a mercenary for the communist Red Skull regime. Speaking of Red Skull, he's the one who imparted the codename Crossbones onto Rumlow, a title that Brock would carry with him forever. Now, when you think of the villain Crossbones, you picture him fighting Captain America, right? Well, Crossbones has thrown down with Spider-Man once or twice in the past as well, and more specifically, the Miles Morales version of the webhead. In the 2017 Spider-Man animated series, during the episode Goblin War Part 3, Miles sneaks up on a distracted Crossbones with the help of Ghost Spider and Spider-Girl. Miles would normally be overpowered by Crossbones' combat skills, strength, and all-around endurance, but in a shocking twist, huh? you'll get the pun in a minute here, Miles was able to focus and use his spider camouflage to outsmart Crossbones, all before zapping the villain with an electrical blast. Huh? Did you catch the pun there? If not, don't worry, you'll get it later. McDonald Gargan, aka Scorpion, has become one of the most well-known Spider-Man villains over the years. Sometimes Scorpion is portrayed as a definite threat, and then other times he's presented as a glorified jobber. But either way, his iconic green suit and stinger have been staples in Spider-Man comics for years and years. Just uh, waiting for that on-screen debut still. Hey there, Marvel Studios. You can introduce the character anytime now. Anyways, the version of Scorpion that we are about to discuss that Miles Morales has defeated in the past is not the Mac Gargan that we're all so familiar with. In fact, his name isn't Matt Gargan at all. Yeah, the Ultimate Universe version of this character is called Maximus Gargan. A uh, clever little switch up there. Now, Maximus is called the Scorpion, but it's more like a gang affiliation thing. He does not wear his iconic green suit or have that sweet stinger, but boy can Maximus fight, which Miles found out the hard way. Within the first 10 or so issues of Ultimate Comics Spider-Man, Norman Osborn sends the Scorpion to kill Miles. During the inevitable fight, Miles uses his trusty Venom Sting to paralyze Scorpion before knocking him out cold with a powerful punch. Miles has thrown down with Scorpion on multiple other occasions since, which has not turned out the best for our boy Maximus either. Hard body gangster dude losing to a teenager in Air Jordans? Ooh, that stings, huh? Doesn't it? Oh yeah, it's a punathon. Please bring Paul Giamatti back as Rhino. Please bring Paul Giamatti back as Rhino. Please bring. Oh, you're recording that. Did you just catch me thinking out loud there? Okay. 
I mean, I guess that's kind of what this whole video is about, right? Okay, I digress. The next entry on our list is another one of Spider-Man's most notable villains in his legendary rogues gallery, except for the Ultimate Universe version. There will be a good handful of those in this video if you have not figured that out by now. During Ultimate Comics Spider-Man issue 14, Rhino does what rhinos do and begins rampaging through New York for some reason I'm sure that he explained before the climactic fight. Yeah, comic books. Much like the version of Rhino seen in the Amazing Spider-Man 2 movie, Rhino in Marvel's Ultimate Universe also has a more of a mechanical and robotic suit, which is why I was manifesting his return just a few moments ago and will continue to do so when I'm done recording here. In all serious this no, in order to stop Rhino and his destruction of NYC, Miles teamed up with the one and only Captain America, and the two managed to subdue the villain after a brief but intense fight. Wilson Fisk is the Kingpin, a man whose body is as large as his reputation. Or maybe that would make sense the other way around, but I digress. The most feared crime boss and street-level villain in all of Marvel, Wilson Fisk often finds himself battling it out with the likes of Daredevil and, of course, Spider-Man. Miles Morales is no exception to this rule, and as seen in the film that is the inspiration for this video, as well as its sequel that just came out, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse saw Miles fight the Kingpin in a brutal battle. Fisk is also one of the two overarching antagonists of Across the Spider-Verse, but for the sake of this video, we'll focus on the first film. When Miles ultimately bested Kingpin when all was said and done, Kingpin tried to bring his family back from the dead using a machine that opens up portals to the multiverse, all while Miles learns to be a hero and a Spider-Man, a classic underdog tale that sees good conquer evil. I mean, bad guys. They just never learn, do they? In the Ultimate Universe, Aaron Davis is Miles Morales' uncle. Aaron Davis is also a highly skilled burglar and career criminal known as the Prowler. Now, in Marvel's primary Earth-616 universe, Prowler is a different character entirely called Hobart Brown, who in another universe is also called Spider-Punk, and uh, yeah, that's a whole other video for a whole other time. For now, let's talk about the Prowler Aaron Davis and how he's had to fight his very own nephew over the years. In the comics, Miles discovers his uncle's criminal secrets and confronts him for working with the villainous Black Hat. The two relatives reluctantly fought, with Miles using his Venom Strike yet again to secure a victory over his opponent the first time they met as hero and foe. And man, I need to get me some spider power somehow. Anyway, in addition to this confrontation, Miles and Prowler have faced off in various other comics, and it appears the two kinfolk are quite evenly matched, trading wins and losses back and forth like a game of, uh, well, any game really. In future stories, Prowler actually becomes a version of the Iron Spider, donning a sweet black and gold suit, and he and Miles would throw down many more times. Sometimes that's just the way it is. Families love and families fight. Earlier in this video, I had mentioned a villain by the name of Taskmaster and how Crossbones spent time under his tutelage. Well, I think that Taskmaster could learn a thing or two himself from Miles Morales, even though that's like literally his superpower. Taskmaster can instantaneously mimic people's abilities and powers, and then use them against his foes, and you get it. Back on topic, though. During Miles Morales' Spider-Man issue number 21, the aforementioned Spidey duked it out against Taskmaster for the first time. The villainous Black Hat hired the nefarious copycat Taskmaster to steal a device from S.H.I.E.L.D. that can control people's minds and kidnap Miles' girlfriend. Regardless, Miles confronted his foe with the help of Peter Parker and, of course, used a Venom Strike to temporarily paralyze Taskmaster before KOing him. I guess you could say that Miles really took him to task, huh? The next entry on our list has a fairly unique distinction of being one of the very few villains that Miles has beaten the snot out of in both the Ultimate and Earth-616 universes. A few people have taken on the mantle of Mysterio over the years, most famously the visual and special effects artist Quentin Beck. In the Ultimate Universe, Mysterio is actually an android, which is chill, because he's basically the same dude with the same powers we all know and love. Just way more intense and doom and gloom at times. Oh, also, his head is on fire for some reason, like Ghost Rider. 
it's kind of spooky. Anywho, there have been a few occasions where Miles has had to slot Mysterio around, taking place in both Marvel's Prime and Ultimate Universes. Miles has also teamed up with Peter Parker to track down Mysterio, who mysteriously returned from the dead, go figure. In this rivalry's most intense instance, Mysterio used illusions to try and manipulate and then turn Miles' friends and family against him. The majority of these scenarios see Mysterio ultimately getting his butt whooped, proving he's really no match for Miles. If you haven't figured it out by now, Miles Morales is from Earth-1610, better known as Marvel's Ultimate Universe. Now, Miles was eventually merged into Marvel's primary Earth-616 universe, but that's neither here nor there. The Miles Morales native to Earth-616, however, is here and there and everywhere, really, as he grew up as a really well-connected member of the Rigoletto crime family. Over time, this variant of Miles started jumping across universes, acquiring versions of Giant Man's suit, Iron Man's gauntlet, and Captain America's shield. Eventually, this Miles variant would catch the attention of Peter Parker and, uh, well, himself, I guess, or like the good guy version of himself. I know this can be confusing, but you get what I mean. In typical super villain fashion, Ultimatum attempted to explode New York with a destructive device, but ended up getting sent packing after a licking courtesy of our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And how? Spider-Man's two most well-known villains are unquestionably the Green Goblin and the Hobgoblin. Both of these supervillains were birthed from the minds of the patriarchs of the Osborne family, and both have had myriads of other characters attempt to take on their mantles. Not only has Peter Parker had to deal with Goblin after Goblin after Goblin, but Miles Morales has dealt with his fair share as well. In Miles Morales Spider-Man issue number eight, Miles Morales faced off with the Hobgoblin of the Ultimate Universe for the first time. This version of Hobgoblin was revealed to be a mutated version of that universe's original Green Goblin in what was actually a pretty cool twist for that character. Now we're gonna play a game, okay, for a million dollars. If you had to take a guess about how Miles Morales defeated old Hobby Gob, if you guessed Venom striking Gobby's glider, spiraling him out of control and knocking him unconscious, then you have guessed right. The uh, bad thing is that I certainly do not have a million dollars for you. William Baker, otherwise known as Marco Flint, but more commonly known as Sandman, is yet another one of the many iconic and formidable Spider-Man villains. And as before, so it goes, Sandman has fought both Peter Parker and Miles Morales in different universes. Not only has Sandman joined the Sinister Six and done battle with Miles, but again, in another instance when Sandman decided to start working for the Green Goblin. The two did some bad stuff because, you know, villain's gonna villain. But the villain stuff didn't go on for long before attracting the attention of Miles Morales. And when confronted, Sandman attacked and attempted to suffocate Miles in a pile of sand, obviously. However, Miles was able to use that, you know, handy dandy Venom Strike Blast to nullify Sandman, nearly destroying the villain for good. Later in the series, it's revealed that Sandman survived the encounter, but he was left severely injured and unable to properly reform his body. An immediate loss at the hands of the Ultimate Spider-Man. Once again, over in the Ultimate Universe, there's a Venom character, but he's slightly altered. Dr. Conrad Marcus was the first Ultimate Venom, if you will. However, he died in Ultimate Comics Spider-Man issue number 22. And then instead of Eddie Brock, Eddie Brock Jr. is the one who bonds with the Venom symbiote and dons the moniker himself in Ultimate Spider-Man issue number 37. Of course, this leads to an inevitable feud with Spider-Man and Miles Morales steps up to the plate. Miles Morales confronts Eddie Brock and is able to use his spider senses and agility to overcome Venom's immense strength and durability. Miles zaps Venom with a live electrical wire, ending their first encounter in shocking fashion. <laughs> Oh wait, I think I used that line before. Anyway, while on the topic of symbiotes, where there's Venom, there will inevitably be Carnage. And just like Venom, Miles Morales has of course thrown down with Carnage in his universe a few times as well. Most notably in their first appearance during the Amazing Spider-Man issue 799. In this universe, Carnage was created after Dr. Curtis Connors spliced the Venom symbiote with Peter Parker's blood. 
In their most brutal fight in the aforementioned comic book, Miles Morales teams up with Silk to face off with Norman Osborn, who bonds with Carnage, becoming the Red Goblin. After discovering that sound waves could weaken Carnage, because you know, that's how you defeat all symbiotes, Miles and friends used a sonic weapon to stop the extraterrestrial organism. Miles, of course, finished Red Goblin off with one of his Venom Strike punches and then BAM! Good night and goodbye, Carnage. Salim is Miles spelled backwards and is a twisted and tormented clone version of Morales. Beyond possessing all of the same spider abilities as his heroic counterpart, Salim also wields knives that he's expertly trained at using in combat. In the comic book series Miles Morales Spider-Man issues number 24 through 28, Salim created various other clones of himself, which are really just clones of Miles as I stated before in an effort to take over the world. Miles Morales and Peter Parker joined forces once again and took it to the Salim clones head on. After a long and grueling battle, Miles was able to send Salim fleeing, but only with the help of the other Spider-Man. In the end, Salim would not die at the hands of Miles, rather by his own accord. After feeling as though he was betrayed by his companion's shift in Mind Spinner, Salim viciously attacked the former and destroyed the latter along with himself. Tragic fate for a deranged character, no doubt. Doctor Doom is one of the most powerful supervillains in any Marvel Universe, whether that be Earth-616 or the Ultimate Universe Earth-1610. The difference between these two variants of the Doctor Doom character lies solely in their names for the most part. Victor Von Doom or Victor Van Dam, both badass names and both equally as dastardly, wicked and wise. That being said, Miles and Doctor Doom have never really gone toe-to-toe -to -toe in an actual fair fight. However, Miles has given Doom a good knock on one occasion, disrupting the Doctor's plans in the process. In one storyline, Doctor Doom set his sights on Miles Morales, putting him in grave danger after hiring Hydra to capture the young hero. Doom began to experiment on Miles, doing all sorts of painful and torturous things in order to garner a tissue sample from the Spider-Man. Miles was able to break free and knock Doom seemingly unconscious, but unfortunately, that would be one of the last things Miles did before the incursion event that ended his universe altogether. Yeah, not all endings are happy. And that is our list, the 15 strongest villains that Miles Morales has defeated. Did we leave any out? Who is your favorite entry? Let us know in the comments section below, and hey, while you're down there, hit those like and subscribe buttons, and don't forget to enable notifications so you don't miss out on any crawly comic content.